everybody. Welcome to Facebook Friday. If you're watching the replay, thank you. It's okay that you don't catch us live. I record it and save it. Hopefully each time I'm able to save it and then I can um, upload it to YouTube and my blog. Um, that's the beauty of Facebook Live. It gives us lots of options. Um, let's see, I'm a couple minutes late because my UPS man is still in the cul-de-sac and if you haven't heard my dogs and the UPS man are mortal enemies and they must defend the house every time he drives up which is almost daily here at my house so they were going crazy so I had to calm them down get them out of here and everything um so anyways I hope you guys are having a great Friday we're getting close to Christmas um, 10 days from today. My kids actually go until Wednesday. Hi, Joy. Hi, Belinda. Hi, Michelle. Um, and I'm really trying to get to a point where I can take, um, they have nine days off from school. So take as much of those days off and spend with them as I can. So this is going to be the last Facebook Live for a couple of weeks. Hi, Gina. Um, I am um, not saying that I might not pop on for a surprise, but I'm not saying I will or won't. I just don't want to commit to anything because we're going to go see some movies. We're going to go out to eat. We're going to sleep late and just do some some um, family stuff over those nine days. So there will not be a Facebook Friday next Friday or the following Friday, but I definitely will be back in January. Hi, Holly. Um, I really enjoy doing these and I appreciate all of you who um, join me each week. Okay, so just like every week, I have um, some projects and I have a project sheet for you. This week, we're going to make five gift tags. I'm going to show you five different gift tags. I feel like we're kind of reaching that point of no return. I, I don't know about you guys, but I am totally over Christmas. I'm sick of it. I want to pack all my Christmas stuff away. My house feels crowded. My my office feels crowded. I need to like purge and clean and get rid of all this stuff. So I am done. This is the last Christmas stuff I'm going to do. Um, and we're kind of down to the crunch. So I think you guys probably need to make some tags. Um, I um, was making something I call crack corn, which is a caramel corn. I made a bunch of it last night to send uh, to work with my husband. And uh, this is what I, I put them in just those, you know, those Tupperware things you get at the grocery store and then I put this on top of it and that's all I did nothing fancy just a tag um due to poor wireless okay well now it's gone are you guys still there am I still there so anyway that's what I'm doing with um all my tags um and of course on a couple of presents if you go over to my blog these sheets are listed this week there are three sheets because we actually have five projects and it has all the item numbers the measurements and um, on the back page, you'll notice a reminder, today's the very last day to sign up for either one of these classes that Rhonda and I are doing. We're calling them Home for the Holidays because they're for you to do after Christmas when you're home um, and, you know, just kind of have some downtime to craft for yourself. And then online bingo, if it's not already full, I didn't check today, but if it's not already full, then uh, that's where you can sign up. But it, I have a feeling it might be full because there was only two spots left yesterday. Um, but I want to remind you that this class, the Home for the Holidays class, are the mini albums. And you guys were really seem to really be interested in those after I showed them last week. I know it's kind of hard to tell in the pictures, but um, this is what they look like. And they are a lot of fun. I've actually already started cutting all of these kits. And um, I've kind of projected on how many I need. And they will go out early next week. So if you want to get in on this class or Rhonda's card class, make sure that you follow that link at the bottom of your page. And these pages are listed. There's a link to this PDF on my blog right now. Okay, so prizes. Let's do prizes. I don't want to show the name yet. I, I'm giving away three things today. This, these were last week's prizes. So I drew some winners yesterday. And the first winner is Nancy Peters. Nancy, I think I have your, your mailing address, but I probably will email you just to make sure. So you're getting the Christmas in the making. Congratulations. And then Margaret, and Margaret, I'm not going to try to say your name because I will probably butcher it. 
Um, but Margaret, I don't believe I have your address. You're getting mm, hug and a mug. So I will be emailing you for your address. And then my friend, Pat Ran, you won the iconic Christmas bundle, which is that fun um, bundle we used a couple weeks ago on Facebook Friday. So Merry Christmas, ladies. I will get these out to you in the next couple days. This week I have two more good prizes. The first one is the Santa suit bundle. I love this set. I did a class with this early on in the fall and uh, you guys seem to really like it too. It's a really fun set. So I have this bundle and then I have um, Christmas Happiness, which is really a fun set. I used this some for my holiday retreat. Um, so if you wanna enter, you go over to my blog post that should have just gone live right now and you click on the raffle copter. It's like a little widget there in my post and it's gonna ask you some questions. You have to be in the United States to win these. Um, fill it out and let me know which prize you would prefer to win or if you don't have either of them and you'll take either of them, let me know that also. Um, that way I don't, if I pick you, I don't send you something you already have. Okay, so that's that. Let me move all that out of the way. Um, and as always, I am doing the all five make and takes today free with a $30 minimum order using this hostess code um, by Monday night. So if you have one more order you need to get in, do it this weekend. Use this hostess code and one more order. That sounds kind of ominous. One more order before Christmas, or maybe you just want to buy something for yourself because, you know, our holiday catalog has a lot of retiring stuff. Then I will send you all five tags on Tuesday, um, the kits to make them. Okay, so these tags, I kept them, I mean, in my mind, they're simple because there are a lot of just kind of piecing it together. I don't know, my my opinion of simple isn't always the same as someone else's opinion of simple. I'm kind of jaded and I think everything is pretty simple. But let's do this first one. A lot of these, I want you to think about how you can use what you have, because truly, I mean, you're gonna, if you need to make some tags before Christmas, you pretty much probably are gonna need to use what you already have. So I kind of pulled some things that we've been using in Facebook Friday, some of my classes, um, just some quick and easy things. So this is that fun mitten uh, bundle. This, oh, did I not pull it out? Yeah, no, no, it's just the, it's just the, the die cuts. I cut out the, um, the intricate mitten, which that one isn't easy, I will tell you. To cut that out, make sure that you use, well shoot, that you use your intricate, how do I wanna put this on, let me think. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Your intricate, no, it's called precision base plate. It's an accessory you can get for your big shot. And I, you know what, I didn't list that on the PDF, but if you look online under um, the big shot um, link, there's other things listed in there. Um, that precision plate helps tremendously with this specific die um, and I will say I was even talking to a customer about this recently you run it through turn it this way run it through turn it you know another direction and run it through again um, because there's so many little tiny cuts that it's trying to make in there that sometimes it has um, trouble doing it so you really have to kind of run it through a few times, use that precision plate, use your dye brush, and then I always use my paper piercer to get all those little doodads out. Um, also, I will use a dryer sheet. Guys, a dryer sheet, if you don't have the precision plate, works really, really well. You put it under your cardstock, and um, it kind of creates more pressure because it's thicker, but it also is a little bit sticky, and these little doodads will stick to it. But I will say that well, I cut a ton of these out, so I really think I wore my framelit out. Um, I mean, I cut like probably close to 200 of them. And so I, it, the dryer sheet didn't do the trick. I, I really think that the precision plate was the better, the better choice for this one. Okay, so I used the mini dimensionals, and I just kind of put them in, you know, where they won't be seen. And I'm going to put it on a Whisper White solid mitten. I feel like this bundle needs to stay around for a long time because mittens is a very wintry thing and I feel like the sentiments even in this this mitten stamp set um, aren't necessarily Christmas um, so I really feel like this one I don't know is it retiring I should know this stuff guys and I don't even know if it's retiring 
I don't know, you guys check if you want it because you need it. All right, now the sentiment I'm using, like I mentioned, the sentiments in the stamp set that go with this are super cute, but I didn't really feel like they were great for Christmas or even for tags. So I pulled out Oh What Fun, and this is the set you need in your arsenal. Um, this is your go-to for Christmas sentiments. It's been around for a couple of years, it's great. And I'm using the Merry Wishes. And I'm gonna use Real Red and just do it on here. Anne-Marie, I see you're watching. I hope you're feeling better today. There we go. All right, now let me see if I can remember where I put it. I'm gonna put it across there with some more dimensionals and I'm using the little babies. They're actually called mini dimensionals, but I call them babies like that. And then just a little Baker's twine bow. Now I debated when I made these tags, I originally was going to do a class with them and then it just, time got away from me and I didn't get to do the class. Um, and I debated on whether we should put a hole um, in each tag and then put some twine through it so that you can, you know, cause tags usually have a string. But I decided not to do that because number one, that's a lot of work, right guys? <laughs> And two, I like to just stick some um, dimensionals on here and stick it to the package. Um, dimensionals will hold really well. And those little things that I told you that I sent uh, to my to work with my husband, that's what I did. I put some dimensionals on, stuck it down, and uh, boom, called it done. Because to punch a hole and thread the string, you know, that's a little more fussy. But if you wanted to, just take your, this is the handheld 1 8 inch punch and just punch a hole and use some of that, that same baker's twine to, to uh, you know, put through there. I don't know. Those are, that's just my thoughts. I, you know, when it comes to tags, it's usually something that you need to do, to do in a hurry. And, and that just seems like a whole lot of work to tie all those little strings through that hole. All right. I'm peeking at your comments. Edible cookie dough, Nicole, you're speaking my language. Yum. I guess it's edible because it doesn't have eggs or something. Yeah, we made cookie dough here this week um, for something, and uh, it was, like, horrible. I have to get it out of the house immediately. Okay, so the next one, very basic, but I think has really big wow factor. I did not get to use this set enough. I used it, I think, for one club project and maybe that's it but this is the musical season stamp set and then the framelits that go with it have these beautiful musical die cuts um this is just i think is very classy and um and just very pretty so i did a stitched this is the largest stitched circle framelit and then i used the merry music of course designer series paper um and i cut this out with a circle framelit that was just a little bit smaller than the stitch circle. And I'll have to tell you that I was inspired to do this tag by a card that I saw on Instagram and it was all black and it had a whole bunch of beautiful layers. Um, and it was like the this pattern paper and this instrument and gold and I think it had some embossing and I, and I don't remember whose it was, but it was stunning. And, uh, so I didn't make the card, but I thought, okay, I'm gonna make a tag that's similar, that kind of has the same little feel. All right, so the stamp that I'm using is from that musical season, this one right here. And I originally thought, um, let's take off those little swirls on the side, you know, let's mask it. And then I thought, no, we're gonna, you know, we're in a hurry, let's just do it, and it'll look beautiful. So I left the little scrolls on. We don't need to make it too difficult, it's just a tag, right? I am the queen of making things difficult. Layers upon layers and bows and you know, but let's keep it simple when we do these tags. So this is just a strip of white cardstock and truly I just stamped it on white and then took it my trimmer and trimmed it the width and the height of the words. That's usually what I do. I don't even you know try to find a specific measurement. So there you go. Now you could, again, punch a hole here, put a little string through it, and then you have a tag, or put your, whoops, put your dimensionals on the back and stick it down. Um, this would be beautiful with our big black and white striped ribbon. So if you, um, you know, added a bow to your gift with that and then just kind of stuck this down there with it, I think that would be stunning. 
Okay, that's tag number two. Now tag number three also evolved from a card I saw somewhere. I um, When I'm looking through Instagram, I take screenshots of all the cards and projects I like. And then when I need inspiration, I go back and look at my um, photos and, and there's a whole, you have actually a folder of screenshots. So then I just scroll through and I find, ooh, I like that, I like that, let me pull. That's um, what I've really been doing lately to get inspiration. It's quicker than Pinterest. Okay, so this came from a card similar to this. I, again, have no idea. It was months ago, but it was enough inspiration for me to make a tag. Now this stamp is, comes in a bundle. It's called Merry Little Labels, and it has a coordinating punch, which we all love. We love framelits, but we all love punches. This is the punch that comes with it. It's listed on the um, project sheet as the bundle. You'll see the bundle number there. So I'm just gonna cut that out. And then I cut these. This is the Lots of Labels, I believe. Let me make sure I'm not misquoting. Lots of Labels Framelit, isn't it? Doesn't it look so similar? It's very similar. So these were great to stack on top of each other. Basic Black and again, that Merry Music. I, th I don't know, I was gonna say, I think this may have been my favorite paper of the, the season, but, but then I forget about my beautiful Buffalo check. So pretty. All right, now this is Red Glimmer. Have you guys ever used the Red Glimmer? I feel like it's kind of under underserved in the catalog. People um, don't always re uh, notice it, but this is so, uh, real red glimmer, and I'm gonna punch it with the banner punch. Did I say silver? I think I might've said silver glimmer. Real red glimmer. So that's the banner triple punch. Just punched it on both sides. Stick this in here with a, with a dimensional. And then one thing I forgot to do is stick, this is one of our foil snowflakes that I cut in half and half again. So you get four out of one snowflake. Well, I should have put it on before the dimensional, so I'm gonna have to shorten it a little bit. I get to talking and don't pay attention to what I'm doing. And slide that under there. So you can, get, you can go a long way. There's a lot of those foil snowflakes in that package. And then more dimensionals. Now, the dimensionals are not gonna stick real well to the glimmer paper. They just don't. So I'm gonna do it both here on the foil and the paper, and that should be plenty. Now let me get it centered. There you go. And there you go. And you could do a little, again, a hole in a string or two dimensionals on the back. You know, I, next week I'm sending treats to my kid's school. Oh, is it freeze up? Look like it froze up. I'm sending treats to my kids' school next week. Um, and I like to send treats, of course, to their regular classroom teachers, but then to all the other the specialists, the PE teacher, the music, the art, the secretaries, the the crossing guard that, you know, blocks traffic for them every morning. The, all those little people. I think it comes out to like 18 little little treat bags that I want to send. And so I just put it in one of our cellophane bags and attach a tag. And I feel like, you know, yeah, I didn't hand make a box for each person, but I feel like I still, you know, am sending them something handmade. Um, and a tag takes a fraction of the time as making handmade boxes for all those people. So I don't know, I'm just really into tags lately. I feel like it's a tiny piece of art and I love it. Okay, tag number four. This tag was inspired by Patty Bennett. And I, it's funny because she posted a sneak peek of something somewhere and I saw it and all I saw was like this much, the deer and the paper. That's all I saw. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do a tag. So I don't even know what her project looked like, but I know it had the deer and the vellum and the paper and it was enough. That's, you know, you just never know how you're gonna find your inspiration um, or where you're gonna find it. So the stamp, Christmas Blessings. Oh, and my paper looks a little bit crooked. Well, that's all right, we're gonna go with it. Christmas Blessings is from, let me find that stamp set. This set called Christmas Pines. This is um, a carryover, it's in the annual catalog and it's a really good one because the framelits there's like a ton of them. There's pine cones and there's these little, you know, sprigs and 
all kinds of stuff. So this is an excellent set. It's in the annual catalog and the framelits are there too. It does not come as a bundle anymore, just when it first came out, but it's a great set. So I'm gonna use that Christmas Blessings. I, I tend to forget about all of those beautiful things we have in the annual catalog. Once that holiday catalog comes out, it's like I forgot. All right, so Christmas Blessings Cherry Cobbler. And I'm going to snip that because I don't like how it's getting bigger on that side. Just like that. All right. Now, that's all. That's all the stamping. So this is the largest stitched shape oval from the Year of Cheer Designer Series paper. Have you guys seen this? It's gorgeous. And I'm not a metallics person per se, but I do like this one. And, of course, that gingham, that gold gingham that's in that package. Oh, my gosh. Or buffalo check. I don't know. I'm obsessed. It's amazing. And this is copper. I've cut him from copper. And he, if you're wondering where he comes from, he's from the annual catalog also. Oh, I didn't list it on the paper. Darn it. Okay, so Santa Sleigh, that's what it's called. Santa Sleigh Framelits in the annual catalog. I'm sorry, you guys, I left that off. All right, so let's put him on the vellum first. And the reason I'm gonna do that instead of working from the bottom up is because I need to know where to put my dimensionals on the vellum so that we don't see them on the, you know, through the, the vellum. So I'm gonna put him here and then I'm gonna flip it over and put two or three, just kind of mirroring those, mirroring. And flip it over. Yes, I agree. Copper is gorgeous. It's so shiny. And it doesn't, I feel like I don't ever photograph it very well. It just doesn't do it justice. All right, so you saw how I mirrored those dimensionals. That way you're not, that, that vellum is popped up. It's creating dimension, but you don't see any of that adhesive. All right, then a couple of dimensionals here. And we'll put that across him. And that's it. I don't know, I feel like every time I have to apologize that it doesn't have a string, but I just really didn't want to put those strings on. If you want to put a string, punch a hole and add the twine. I just, I don't know, I think it's fine. I, I always feel like a project is naked when it doesn't have a ribbon or twine. It's crippling, you guys. I have to use the ribbon and the twine. Okay, last one. This one is actually a little sneak peek of the projects last week that we did Facebook Friday. Use the tags and trimmings, you know, the stocking and the pillow box, and this stamp set. And so when I was cutting their projects, I wanted to put a little something in. So this is, the this part is the tag that I put on their little, their little candy that I put in there. And then I thought, that's so cute. I'm gonna add it to my tags, my tags video tomorrow. So tags and trimmings, this is the set that goes with a stocking. And we're gonna just stamp that sentiment in real red. Here are those lots of labels again, those um, framelits, lots of labels. And I'm gonna stamp it in real red. And I'm gonna do it at the bottom to leave room for my little holly berry, holly leaves up at the top. And instead of using berries, I decided to use the heart, the stitched heart, because I really think it's just so cute. Anything with a stitching on it, I adore. See that, isn't that so cute? That's from the stockings framelit. All right, now another stitched shape framelit. I always have to think about what I'm saying when I say those, stitched shape square framelit. And I believe that's the largest one. And a piece of the Quilted Christmas Designer Series paper to go in. And then two more dimensionals. And that's it. Now, you know what the good part is? Look, you guys, I'm going to have all these tags ready to go on my kids' teacher's projects. Yay! I hope you guys like these. Now don't go yet because I have something else I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to clean up just a tad and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to remind you again in case you didn't hear at the beginning, I am not going to do the scheduled Facebook Friday for the next two weeks. My kids are home. We're going to do, we're going to do some fun stuff. 
Um, but I will, when as soon as January hits, I'll be back full time. Um, we're gonna do lots of Facebook Lives to kick off the catalog. I'm trying to, I'm trying to plan some fun things to kind of kick off that catalog because I know you guys are gonna want to order. Um, it's just the cutest, and we're we're gonna be ready for non Christmas things by then. Um, remember that. If you order by Monday night using this hostess code, I'm gonna send you the make and take kits for all of these um, tags. Now, if you didn't necessarily have the stamps that I used, you really could use whatever you have. Just pull out, shop through your own stamps and see what you could use. You know, um, what sentiment could you use in place of each of those? Cause they're pretty generic, pretty generic um, sentiments. Okay, so Let's see, hold on, let me get a drink, and then I'm gonna show you one more thing. Um, I posted yesterday a bot, well, I posted an ornament um, yesterday, and I got a lot of questions about the box that the ornament went in, and I actually made that box. So I thought, okay, you know what, this is gonna be another opportunity for me to show you guys how to make a box. And we're gonna do it exactly the same way that we did with um, the other box we did. Um, now, I went, <laughs> this morning I actually was sorting through the kids' Christmas presents. Um, I always, as we get close to Christmas, I have to go out, I have them all like stacked up way up high in the garage and I have to sort them out, make sure that one kid doesn't have more than the other kids or you know, one has a not, I don't know. I just, it's super stressful for me to make sure that it's all even. Do you guys do that if you have more than one kid? I don't know, it stresses me out. So anyway, I pulled this out because I thought this would be great to make a box for. This looks like a dog toy, but it's a squishy. And my middle child was begging for a squishy. I mean, I don't get it, you guys, but whatever, it's what she asked for. So that's what that is. Okay, so, um. To make your own box, you need to decide what size box you need, depending on what you're putting in it. So I always put my whatever I'm making a box for on my grid paper, and I just kind of go along the lines so that I'm gonna make it big enough, let's see, to, you know, frame that, that thing that I'm making. So then, I'm gonna measure, now you could count, and this this grid paper you know, has all the measurements, but I just pull out my ruler and I measure from one line to the next. So this is three and seven eighths. You know what, I feel like let's make it four just to make it easier, because four is a lot easier than three and seven eighths. So it'll be just a tiny bit bigger. Okay, so we'll say, let me make sure. Yep, we want four inches. It's gonna be four inches by and this is three-fourths. Was that other one three-fourths also? Or we'll, we'll do three-fourths. I can handle three-fourths. Okay, so it's going to be four by four and three-fourths. That's the opening. Now we have to decide how tall. Like how tall does it need to be to hold this, this weird squishy? So I'm just going to take my ruler and measure how tall it is. And it looks like if my box was three inches tall, it'll be enough to hold it. So that means each side needs to be three inches. So I'm gonna measure out and I'm gonna draw my box. I know some of you told me last time that you did this, you put this into practice and you made a box and it was really helpful. So I hope that this helps you um, maybe for Christmas. Um, now, usually with boxes, you need 12 by 12 cardstock, which I'll show you in a second. Now, this is one side, one side, and we need a side up here, and it's gotta be three inches. My, it's going past my grid paper, but that's okay. All the way to the edge. Let's see, we may need to make it smaller because it might. Is it gonna be bigger than 12 by 12? I don't think so. All right, so we know this is three and this is three. So four and six is 10. So this whole side is 10 inches by four and three fourths. We know that this is three and this is three. I feel like I'm back in the classroom. <laughs> That's gonna be 10 inches by 10 and three fourths. All right, so then we're gonna score it. This line right here is at three inches. 
and then move over four and that score line is seven inches and that will be on the 10 inch side and then is this getting really complicated i don't know are you guys following all right so then this is the on the 10 and 3 4 inch side we're going to score it at three inches and then three plus four and three fourths is seven and three fourths i'm waiting for an answer and there's no children in here to answer okay so there's that now let's do that and then we'll make the lid. Shouldn't be too hard. I'm going to cut my paper first if I can clear off some space. So we said 10 by 10 and 3 fourths. So this is my old paper cutter and it's my favorite. Stampin' Up used to sell these. I wish they would bring them back because mine's getting pretty worn out. Okay, so the 10 inch side, I'm gonna look at my notes, the 10 inch side I said, we're gonna score it at three and seven. Three and seven. And then, let's make sure, is that right? Seven, eight, nine, ten. yes, okay. And then on the other side, we're gonna score it at three and seven and three fourths. Okay. The box that I made for the ornament, it's really not complicated, Carrie, I promise. It really isn't, and I i wish I could like explain it in pretty simple terms, but I mean, it's very basic. Once you do it once or twice, then it's pretty easy. Um, now I'm gonna cut these score lines up to the horizontal score lines on two sides, and it doesn't matter which sides you do, as long as you do the two opposite sides. Okay, now I'm going to cut these, and you don't have to do this, but my edges never quite match up exactly right. So I'm gonna cut these tabs at an angle. The box that I made for the ornament was made out of craft paper, which is since retired, but it's my favorite. So I have lots of it, and it's very sturdy. It makes a great box. Okay, so now let's do all these lines. And fast fuse, fast fuse or tear and tape only when you're making a box. This snail will not work, promise you. It will not. I should have done this before I folded those up. Mm. There we go. Okay. And ta da! Put some little, you know, like crunchy stuff what do you call that that stuff you put it in there but now we need a lid right so the lid you could make two of these and the lid would go all the way down but I'm just gonna make one that goes about I don't know what what do you think an inch and a half like halfway down mm, that might be too much maybe just an inch maybe an inch and a fourth we'll do an inch and a fourth so we have to go back to the drawing board and I'm gonna get another piece of um, grid paper if you don't have grid paper, it's in our catalog, and it's only like $10 or something. It's very reasonable, and you get like 100 sheets. Okay, so we need to make that same opening again, which was 4 inches, right? 4 by 4 and 3 fourths, because that's the size of our squishy. You know, she's not even going to care that it has a handmade box. She's going to rip into it. Like that. Okay, now we want the, the side, the little lip to come over and we want it to just be one and a fourth. And I'll tell you that I've gotten to where I don't even have to draw it out of my grid paper anymore. I can just, let's see, let me make sure I line that up right, right there. That I can just like sketch it out on a regular piece of paper and, and write the measurements on, in you know, like a little miniature. But this is very helpful. Sometimes I do still do this when something is a little more complicated. I, the grid paper is extremely helpful. All right, so one and a fourth, one and a fourth, all the way around. Uh-oh, did I go too far? And then one and a fourth over here. Now, I've told you guys um, a few times about using a shim 
when you're making a lid. Sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't, um, just depending on, you know, if the, if the, um, the lid or the box is big, and the shim's gonna slide all the way down. You probably, or the, yeah, the lid, you're gonna want to use a shim. And I'll show you in a second. Okay, so this is one and a fourth. This was, all the way down was four and three fourths, and one and a fourth. Remember in elementary school when your teacher taught you to add fractions? Yeah, I know, I do it every day. I tell my kids that, and they're like, no, you don't. Okay, but you could also just use your ruler and see. Seven and one fourth. And let's, while we have the ruler here, let's see what we're gonna score it. We're gonna score it at one and a fourth and six. Okay, so then this side is six and a half and we're gonna score it at one and a fourth and five and a fourth. What time is it? This feels like it's taking years. I'm sorry, you guys. Okay, so there we have the lid, so let's try it. Let's cut the paper. And I'm doing this on the fly. I didn't even try it before. That goes against everything I stand for. I have to be prepared, and this is just not in my nature to do it on the fly, but I'm doing it. Hopefully the lid fits. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I do have to try it several times to get it perfect. Okay, so let's talk about a shim. Let me grab some post-its. A shim is gonna create a space for your box. Actually, you know what? I can't even use a shim right now because a shim only works when you're doing this, the exact same on every side. So you can turn it, turn it, turn it, and it creates a tiny little space. This box is gonna be fine because it's not gonna be too big. And if your box is a little tight, just pinch it a little bit in like that. Okay, so let's see, the seven and one fourth side, I'm gonna score it at one and a fourth and six. So see how we have a one and a fourth here and one and a fourth there. Now on the six and a half inch side, I'm gonna score it at, I get out of here, one and, one and a fourth and five and a fourth. And you know what, I could have done the shim, couldn't I? Because it is one and a fourth all the way around. Sometimes it takes me a little while, you guys, but you know, all right, it's still gonna work. All right, same thing that we did on the bottom. Let's just do it quickly this time. We're gonna cut all of these up to the horizontal line. Thank you, Laurie, I appreciate you being my cheerleader. Nothing worse than you know, totally ruining a project when you're by yourself, but especially when you have lots of people watching you. But at least it'll help us all know that none of us are perfect, right? Okay, a little fast fuse on these corner tabs. I was thinking this would have been cute with a white lid. And I'm gonna fold them in. Thanks, Gina, I appreciate it. All right, fold those in behind. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's see if the squishy box fits. Ta-da! And there you have it. So cute, right? Tie up some ribbon, add on one of our cute tags, which I don't know where they went, right here. And there you have it. Done, so cute, right? But I want you to see that it does, you squeeze those sides in just a little bit if, you're, if your lid is tight. If you're able to, you know, if it doesn't quite fit exactly, just squeeze them in and it'll go right down. That's why I like to leave the lid just a little bit shorter. Okay, and look, I'm done wrapping one gift. Only 2,000 more to go. Okay, you guys, whew, that was, that was something. Let's see, let me pull all these back in here. Let's review. I'm back to my teaching days. Let's review. Um, okay, you've got five different tags that I will send you one of each if you use the hostess code by Tuesday. You've got project sheets to use as your reference, um, which are over on my blog. Don't forget, deadline for these classes is today. Um, giveaways. 
enter the giveaway on my blog. I've got a bundle and a stamp set. And oh, I'm going to close those on Monday also because I want to get those in the mail before Christmas. And if I wait till next Friday, I probably will forget because my kids will be here and it'll be crazy. So go over there, enter um, that giveaway, and I will draw a winner probably Tuesday morning. Okay, you guys, I think I'm going to go take a nap now. I feel exhausted. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful Merry Christmas. I'll be popping in here and there, um, but not back to our regular Facebook Friday until the first week of January. Um, have a Merry Christmas, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.